Have you ever wondered if using the Maffetone method, AKA slow running, zone two running, would work to shed the weight so you could get lighter, so you could run faster, so you could be more happier? Look, I was in that situation and I got three minutes faster in a year. I ran an ultra marathon, like a 50 miler, and I lost a crap load of weight. Let me tell you firsthand, this works. And I'm gonna talk about a number of reasons why this may work for overweight runners like yourself. So let's dive into it. Now there are some problems with the Malfitone method that I'll talk to you about a little bit later on in the video. First things first, you need to understand what the Malfitone method is and I'm gonna tell you in less than 30 seconds. First off, you're gonna take 180 minus your age and that is gonna be the heart rate that you're gonna run at for all of your runs. According to Dr. Phil Malfitone, this will build your aerobic base. Number two, if you are on medication, you're gonna pay attention to this. You're gonna to have to reduce your heart rate by 10 beats. If you find yourself overweight, you're gonna to have to reduce your beats per minute by five. Now, if you're coming back from an injury or if you haven't seen any improvement for a while, again, you're gonna to have to reduce by five. This is just what he says, don't shoot the messenger. I'm gonna tell you something. You may not like to hear this, but it needs to be said. And I'm always gonna tell you exactly what I've experienced, and that is frustration. You have to be patient when you do this method because while you're running slow, it's gonna get very frustrating because there may be times where you may end up walking and you're like, you gotta be kidding me, I just wanna run. Why can't I run? Well, the reason you can't run and keep your heart rate in that zone is because your aerobic base hasn't been built up yet. Second question you're probably gonna be asking yourself is, okay, how long am I gonna to have to do this for, Dave? It can take three to six months. If you wanna start building a good aerobic base, again, everyone's gonna be different, so you have to monitor what you're doing by doing what's known as a math test. And a math test is something that you're gonna do every month. You're gonna run the same route, either on a track, or just on the road or wherever you can have a flat piece of ground and you're gonna run three to five miles. That's what you're gonna do every single month. And what should happen is over time, you should get faster. It took me a couple of months before I started to see some kind of cool improvements. And I also adjusted my diet because I was starting to consume a lot of processed foods, stuff I didn't want to eat. Just kind of, you get hooked on it and all of a sudden you're like, why am I eating this stuff? Come on. The big thing is you can't go out and just do one run a week or two runs a week or three runs a week. Look, I found that the sweet spot for doing this method is about four to six times. Four to six times is fantastic if you can carve out the time. Try to get at least half an hour Okay, maybe 45 minutes to start off with and work your way up to an hour. Running should be improving. As an overweight runner, your goal is to want to lose weight. That's what it was for me. And so if you're watching this video, that may be what you're thinking about is losing some weight. Okay, first thing I'm gonna tell you, you can never outrun a bad diet. So if you're consuming a lot of junk food, a lot of processed food, a lot of things that just is so many empty calories like sodas and stuff like that. Guys, it's not gonna work. It's just, you cannot outrun a bad diet. I've tried and it doesn't work. So the thing about the Maffetone method is it helps your body start to burn fat as a fuel. And burning fat as a fuel is a great thing, specifically if you wanna start running and you wanna go a little bit longer each time and eventually you want to run a marathon. Look, using your reserves, using your fat reserves. Look, we all have a lot of fat reserves that we can use, okay? And burning it off of our body as a fuel is a great way to lose weight, provided you've adjusted your diet and you're not consuming more than you're burning. So keep that in mind. Now, the one thing that overweight runners need to know is when you're using this method and you're running, when you're finished running, you should not be starving, right? You should not be ravenous. Like you could just like eat everything all in sight. Now, mind you, if you're running like an ultra marathon, yeah, that may happen. But if you're just kind of starting out using this method, 
If you're running too fast, what you're burning is you're burning your you're burning glycogen, okay? And that's all the carbs that your body has stored. And so when you're burning that, that's readily available. It's, it's easy fuel to get, right? So if you're sprinting or if you're doing 400 meter repeats or if you're doing a tempo or a threshold run, you're gonna be burning a lot of, you're working out anaerobically. And when you're working out anaerobically, the majority of your energy is coming from your glycogen stores. When you run slow, you are burning your fat and you're also mitigating the issues about getting injured okay because again we don't want to get injured we want to promote a healthy lifestyle and something that's going to be sustainable so if you're out running and you're getting injured all the time how sustainable is that like you probably want to give up running and you'll be like i don't want to do this anymore this just sucks so with running slow and building up an aerobic base you burn the fat, you reduce the chances of getting injured, you increase your chances of sustainability, and you have a lot more fun while doing it. So overweight runners who have weight to lose, keep this in mind. You are putting a huge amount of stress on your body. When you run, you are putting two and a half to three times, if not maybe four, it just all depends. I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but you're putting on a large amount of force on your joints. And when you do that, if you weigh like 150 pounds, you're upwards to 450 pounds of force coming down on your joints, on your ankle, your foot. Your... So you wanna make sure that you're landing correctly. So making sure that your form is in good shape. Now, again, if you may be new to running, you're probably going, what the heck are you talking about, Dave? Well, if you go and get a pair of running shoes, if you go into the store, so what I'm they may get you to run, so that neutral. way they can see you not doing a whole running lot of back pronating. and forth okay. and see how you so land, we're gonna try right? Because if you're heel striking, you. if you're landing on your heel, it's not necessarily the, the, the best way from what I've been told. If you run forefoot, if you land midfoot, right? It's kind of like riding a bike in one place. Like if you're riding a bike, you're landing, your foot is right underneath your kinetic chain and your body is able to absorb that, that force. However, if not, and you land on the heel, it puts a lot of pressure on the knee in a lot of places that you don't want it to go. Then you run into, you know, injuries. So overweight runners, you got to pay attention to how much, like, here's the thing. If you're like 100 pounds overweight, 150, maybe you're 200 pounds overweight. I don't know. I know for me, I couldn't run at first when I had so much weight to lose. I decided that I would walk. Now there's two things, and I think most runners, this doesn't really apply to overweight runners, but for the context of the video and the title, if you've decided to run, you're probably going to be going, what do I buy? What do I wear? Okay, like I'm not running in a, in a running t-shirt right now. Okay, I'm just wearing one of my regular shirts while I do this video. But ideally you want a shirt that wicks away all the moisture from your skin, number one. Number two, you wanna get a pair of underwear that's gonna stop the chafing between your thighs, okay? And that is important because the rash that you can get from the friction back and forth is not a good thing. So you could, you know, get squirrels nut butter, you can use uh, body glide, um, and you can also get a pair of underwear that's like spandex tights that kind of goes halfway down to the knee. And that works really well, okay? Now you may want to get a couple of pairs because again, you're get, depending on how much you're running, that's going to be a lot of friction on that material. So just keep that in mind because I'll tell you, when I first started running, I had bloody nipples, I had chafing going on in places that let's not talk about right now. Um, it's just, it was something, okay? So really, really important. Now the next thing is really, that goes without saying, you need a pair of running shoes that are comfortable. Now, I find that a lot of running shoes are very pointy, okay? They take your feet and they, and they squish them together. And for me, I have wide, I have a wide foot. And so when I run in shoes, I want my feet to be able to splay out when I land, 
And to do that, I need a wide toe box, right? And I didn't do that when I first started running. That was some, that was a big mistake on my part, but I just didn't know. I eventually ended up with blisters and it was just uncomfortable and black toenails. It just, it was really awful. So I eventually got a pair of Ultra Torin, a great shoe, a really wide toe box, and I've used them all these years. They've got different brand, like they've got different models from trail running to road running to track. These shoes have, have done wonders for me and I, I really like them, but again, everybody's different. Sometimes people's feet aren't the same, so they don't work for one person. So again, this is just my experience. So I think there's other shoes out there that have wide toe boxes. So again, you may want to do your own research and uh, see what you can find on that side. Now, the next thing that's really important is since you're going to be training or since you're going to be running using heart rate, you want to make sure that you have a watch. Okay. That is good quality. Okay. Whether you get a Garmin, get a Koros or a Polar. Wonderful. Those are great watches that record uh, heart rate extremely accurately. I used to have an Apple watch. I don't anymore. Um, why don't I, why do I have one of these? I like to have a watch that specifically is targeted towards the activity that I'm doing. I don't want like an everyday watch type of thing, but look, you got to start with where you are. And so these watches are great. Um, the heart rate monitor on them, on the wrist, it's okay. It's not the best. You, if you have a chest strap, right? You can get one that goes across. It works. I find the chest ones like the best. The second best I find are the armbands. Okay. You can get some on that, that go around your arm. Um, and then you've got your wrist ones. Now, while you're running and you're using heart rate training and you're using the Malphitone method, using your heart rate, the thing is, is when you do these, these runs, you want to make sure that you're every mile you're keeping your heart rate in your math zone. Okay. And there's a 10 beat zone. So whatever your number comes out, let's say it's 100 and 140, you can go from 140 to 130. Okay. That's your range that you're in. Now I've also found that if I run at the top end of my math number, I find that my results tend to improve faster. <laughs> okay. It's kind of weird, but anyway, that's just what I've noticed over time. One of the questions that comes up a lot of times when I talk about math tone training is how long do I have to keep running this way? When do I need to, you know, change things up and what do I do when I get to a hill? And what do I do when I get to a downhill? So when you deal with hills, you can either walk up the hill or you can run really slow, but increase your cadence, right? Take more steps. And when you're going downhill, I treat it like free speed, <laughs> right? Cause you're going downhill. So you don't have to work so hard. Now, again, you want to pay attention to your cadence. You want to pay attention to what you're running on. Usually when people ask me about these things, they're talking about trail run. And yeah, you can trail run using the Maffetone method. Uh, you'll do a lot more hiking than you will running. I'll tell you that. If you've been using the Maffetone method for a number of months and you've noticed that you've stopped improving, you're not getting faster than you were the previous month. Okay. A couple of things you want to look at. One is how many runs have you been doing? How long are you running for, right? How far are you running for? How long have you been out this week? next week, the week after, the week after, do you have the consistency down? If you've got the consistency and you've been doing it for months and months and months, and eventually it stops, it just means that your body is hit like, I don't know, I call it like a set point where it eventually figures out, okay, I've been doing this long enough. I know where I am. You, Dave, you seem to keep doing the same runs all the time. And my body goes, boom. All right. This is where you're going to stay now. Now, for me, I was like, okay, well, I don't want that to happen anymore. <laughs> I want to kind of move on. So if you've noticed after a month or two, things haven't progressed, take a look at how, far, <clears throat> how much you've been training. Also take a look at the food quality. Take a look at the sleep. Take a look at the rest that you've been getting. Take a look at your stress level. Take a look at the weather. The weather plays a massive role because your heart rate will be uh, will be elevated when it's hotter outside. So in the summer months, 
man, you may have to get out and run earlier in the, in the morning or late at night or whatever it is. So you may not see the results. You may not see the results until it cools down and then you're gonna be like, oh, it does work. The Mafeco method does work. The weather always, always comes first. You can't change that unless you're running on a treadmill inside. Then you can see your results because then you can control your environment, okay? But if you're an outdoor runner like me, then yeah, you're gonna have to deal, you're gonna have to contend with what's going on with the weather. And that can be kind of frustrating. Now, something that Dr. Phil Maffetone has talked about in the past, and that is you don't always have to run slow. There's a point for faster running and you can do that for a month, right? Maybe start doing 80% of your runs, low intensity, and then maybe two of your runs per week, or maybe even just one run per week. Do a tempo, do a faster run, whatever it is. Get, elevate your heart rate. Because when you elevate your heart rate, you're, you're, you're pushing it to a new bound. And that's a good thing. Now, the thing is, is if you're overweight, you're kind of like, kind of afraid to run fast because I got all this weight bouncing around and it can feel uncomfortable and embarrassing. And I know because I've been there and I'm kind of still there because over the last number of years, I've allowed the weight to kind of come back. I wish I could say that running is a bed of roses and it's gonna get easier. Everything is gonna be great, but I'd be lying to you, okay? It never seems to get easier. You just seem to get faster. That's typically the way I look at it, right? You're improving, and then as you improve, you're getting faster. So yeah, you may be two minutes faster than you were, you know, six months ago, but it doesn't feel like, because you're like, but running still hard, I still get a lot more weight to lose. Well, look, look at where you were. Look at where you came from, because that to me is a huge, I don't know, man, that to me, you look back and go, oh, that's where I started and this is where I am now. God, it's a great feeling, it really is. Now, whether you were vegan, whether you were vegetarian, paleo, keto, or whether you just don't subscribe to any of those things and you just eat whatever it is you wanna eat, you'll improve. Just watch how much you eat. Portion control is huge, right? Being able to resist sugary junk is huge. And I know, because I've been there <laughs> many times. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you're in an industry where you're always with clients, you know, where do you go to meet up with people and not have anything, you know, like, I don't know, I always like to make few people feel comfortable. So if we're gonna stop and have a coffee, usually a coffee comes with something else, whether it's a donut, whether it's a pastry, whether it's something, right? I, I've changed things up a lot now. I do a lot of walk and talk meetings. So we'll go for a coffee, but we'll go somewhere else and we'll go for a walk. And so we can be walking for like an hour and just sauntering, like just, you know, really easy walking, right? Just like what I'm doing right now. And then first off, you get exercise. Number two, you're not stuck in a cafe. Number three, it's beautiful out walking outside, except in the rain. <laughs> Those kind of days, you got to stay inside, obviously. But it's a, I don't know, it's, it's just fun. It's a, it's a nice time. Everybody has a day one. Everyone has a starting point. And it can be very frustrating if you've got a lot of weight to lose and you're just trying to figure your stuff out. Um, if you like to go to a gym, go to a gym. Do what it is you got to do. But if you want to use running as a way of getting there to build up your cardio base, uh, lose weight, uh, get to see some really cool places, just move your body. Honestly, running is an everything kind of muscle group, man. It just, I don't know. It's probably one of the best things I've ever done for my life. And I know it can be a challenge at the best of times just to be motivated to get out the door. 
specifically if you live in the Northeast where the weather can be really terrible in the winter. But if you have the clothing for the, for the temperature and for the weather that you're about to run in, it's really not bad because when you run, you're about 15 degrees warmer by running. So always dress for the condition. Some of the reasons I don't like using the Malfitone method Let's go back to a video I did a number of years ago. Like I always say, get out and run. See you next week, guys.